In this video, we review the different licensing options for Windows 365. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Coming up, we're going to review the different licensing options for Windows 365, including business, enterprise, and frontline. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with a friend who might find it helpful. Also, check out my courses on Windows 365 with Intune Management, Azure Virtual Desktop, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, and Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID. Links are in the description below. A big thank you to all my channel members. Your support means the world to me. Back to it. Windows 365 provides cloud-based PCs hosted by Microsoft on the customer's behalf. Coming up, we're going to review the different licensing options available for Windows 365. I don't intend to do a deep dive on specifics such as cloud PC sizes and pricing. The goal is to outline business, enterprise, and frontline licensing options and use cases for each. Anytime I create content related to licensing, I have to start with a disclaimer, and this video is no different. The following information is based on the details provided in the Microsoft documentation at the time the video was created. Licensing changes frequently, and details may have changed by the time you're watching this. Consult with a licensing specialist if you have further questions. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's dig into it, and we'll start with the two types of Windows 365 licensing, business and enterprise. Both options provide a cloud-based PC, but there are significant differences between the two options. We'll begin with Windows 365 Business, and the first significant difference is that it has no Intune management. We can't view and manage the cloud PCs directly from Intune. However, you could manage a business cloud PC the same as you would a user's personal device. Also, there's no licensing requirements for the business cloud PC. Intune management isn't required, so no Intune license is needed. The cloud PC runs Windows 10 or 11 Pro. The license includes rights to log into that client OS. There's a hybrid benefit option available with Windows 365 Business. The client OS is licensed per user. If the user has a valid Windows 10 or 11 Pro license, applying the hybrid benefit could save up to 16%. The only networking option available for a business cloud PC is the Microsoft Managed Network. Business cloud PCs can't join a Windows AD domain. They can only join Enter ID. And with business, there's also a 300 license limit per tenant. So when would we use Windows 365 business? We could use it in cases where a user needs a temporary unmanaged cloud PC that we want to create and remove when no longer in use. A contractor who just needs access to an organization's email and SharePoint, for example. This is a way to give them access without shipping physical computers or giving them access from a personal device. We can use Windows 365 Business to provision a cloud PC with minimal administration. There's no integrated Intune management. We just need to assign and remove licenses. Another reason to use Business is if the user doesn't have the licenses required for Enterprise. We'll cover the requirements for Enterprise in a minute. But if we think back to the remote contractor example, we don't need to give them any licenses in addition to the Windows 365 business license. Next, let's review Windows 365 Enterprise. Unlike business, Enterprise has a dedicated blade in Intune to manage cloud PCs. We can push Intune policies, configuration profiles, and applications to Enterprise cloud PCs. Enterprise does not include the client OS license like business does. It requires the user to have a Windows 10 or 11 Enterprise Client OS license. And because of the Intune integration, they also require an Intune license. An Enter ID P1 or P2 license is also required. By the way, many bundles such as the Microsoft E3 or E5 come with most of the prerequisite licensing. If the users have one of those, the only additional license they need is the Windows 365 Enterprise license. Again, check with a licensing specialist if you have questions. There's also more customization available with an Enterprise Cloud PC. For network connectivity, we can use the Microsoft Managed Network or use an Azure Private Network. This is a VNet in Azure that the Cloud PC can connect to. From there, the user can access resources on the private network or get internet access through a managed firewall. The Enterprise Cloud PC can be Enter ID joined or Enter Hybrid joined to a traditional Windows Active Directory. When Active Directory joined, the Cloud PC requires Hybrid join that uses Enter Connect Sync. Enter DS, 
the Microsoft Manage Active Directory service, is not supported with Windows 365. We also have the option to use custom images with Enterprise. The Cloud PC can be built from an image that has custom settings applied and applications already installed. Enterprise Cloud PCs are for organizations that need fully managed Cloud PC solutions. Many organizations already have the Windows Enterprise Client License, Intune and Entra P1 or Entra P2. In that case, the licensing prerequisites are sunk costs that simplify the move to Windows 365. In some cases, an organization needs more flexibility in how the cloud PCs are managed. If a private network connection is required or the cloud PCs have to be joined to Windows AD, Enterprise is required to use those features. Also, if the organization plans to deploy more than 300 cloud PCs, Enterprise is required. In most environments, Enterprise will be the best option, but consider a business license for those one-off temporary cloud PCs if management and customization isn't a requirement. We can use both Enterprise and business in a tenant. That's the difference between business and Enterprise. Next, let's take a further look at the different licensing options available for Enterprise, including Enterprise Frontline, Dedicated, and Frontline Shared. Let's review how the cloud PCs are allocated with the basic Windows 365 Enterprise license. With this option, there's a one-to-one -one mapping of users to a license. When a user is assigned a license, Microsoft builds that user a dedicated cloud PC. They can log in and use that computer at any time, day or night. The basic enterprise license is for users that need dedicated, unrestricted access to a cloud PC outside of normal business hours, for example. Next, let's review Windows 365 Enterprise Frontline in dedicated mode. With this option, we assign the license at the tenant level, not to a specific users. Users get access by group membership in the provisioning policy. Just like the basic enterprise license, each user gets a dedicated cloud PC. This is an independent cloud PC that's not shared. We get three cloud PCs for each one frontline license in dedicated mode. Here's the catch. For each license, only one of the three computers can be logged into. So if we have 100 licenses, we could have 300 cloud PCs, but only 100 can be accessed at a single time. The use case is for shift workers. Think of a call center or nurses station where we have people using a computer over three eight-hour shifts. Or maybe an organization follows the sun with three eight-hour shifts across different geographies. For the call center example, it wouldn't make sense to pay for a computer for each user if only one is working at a given time. The same goes for cloud PCs. With this option, each shift gets their own cloud PC and they only have access to it during their shift. By the way, it is possible there may be an overlap in usage. Maybe a nurse has to finish their notes while another starts their shift. This is handled with a feature called concurrency buffer. That brings us to the last option, at least at the time of this recording, Windows 365 Enterprise Frontline Shared Mode. And just like dedicated, the license is applied at the tenant. However, users in shared mode don't get a dedicated cloud PC. As you could probably guess by the name, they share cloud PCs. Each license in shared mode equals one cloud PC and one connection to that cloud PC. If we have 100 frontline shared mode licenses assigned to a tenant, we could have up to 100 users connected. Users are assigned by group membership. If we had 400 users in that group, only 100 could access at a time. The computers are shared non-concurrently. Be aware that, again, at the time of this recording, there's no profile management in Windows 365 Frontline in shared mode. The profiles are removed once the user logs off, so the data is non-persistent across logins. Look into options like known folder redirections that redirects users' My Documents, Pictures, and Desktop folder to OneDrive and use Cache Mode and Outlook to improve the user's experience. Shared Mode was designed so users can access a computer for a limited time or for a specific task. A contractor that needs to log in and update a project plan once a week or a mechanic who needs to occasionally log in to order parts. They don't need a dedicated cloud PC for an extended time. These are the types of use cases for Frontline Shared. Choosing the right licensing option depends on factors like user count, their location, either remote, on-premises, or hybrid, and how they use the cloud PC. The directory service used and the organization's Azure and Intune experience are also factors when deciding what option fits your organization best. 
that covers Windows 365 business, enterprise, and frontline in dedicated and shared mode. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.